What is going on, y'all? Check me out here. The notion has came in and saved today. It's been my go-to app for over a year now. Now I'm gonna be sharing my setup, templates, and tips overall that I hope help you as much as they have helped me. So here's what I've done so far that has worked for me. Okay, dang, I'm like, where do I even begin? So starting here on my left side are my favorite pages. These are the pages that I wanted quick access to because I use them pretty frequently. And the way that I view my pages inside of Notion is like a folder system. You have your main page, which is your main folder, and then the pages inside of that being your subfolder. Now, if you don't know how to create a page, you first have to come down here and hit the plus symbol. I'm gonna just name this one fitness. And then the other thing I like to do is come up here and add an icon for it. A football actually works good for this. We can also see it over here on the left-hand side. And if we go over here to fitness and hit the down arrow, you see that we don't have any pages inside yet. So we're just gonna hit the plus symbol to add our first one. And we're gonna call this one workouts. Again, we're gonna add an icon. And you're just gonna repeat that same process for like all of the different pages that you wanna add inside of the main page. So then you can come over here to the left of the word and use the arrow to either expand the view or collapse the view. So Notion started off for me as something that I was just gonna use for work, but then I found that it was great for me for so much more. So what I've done inside of Notion is made a landing page for my business. What I wanted was a nice clean view. I have some cover art at the top that I just found basically by using the search engine that they have built into here. And then beneath that, I wanted to be able to come in here and see a nice visual representation of all the content that has to go live this month. And then over here to the right, Right of that, I have my navigation, but beneath that, I have my links. So kind of in going back, the divider that I have up here at the top, this is something that I added from just honestly searching Google for Notion dividers. I'll link, you know, a recommendation down below. You just add it basically as an image in here and it helps create some separation between your different sections. And then over here in the bottom right is where I have my links. So there's this website out there that lets you create widgets for Notion. They have different ones and I've tried them, but I found that they didn't consistently work. And then I also started to realize that some of them were just kind of taking up space. The nice thing I like with that website is that you can customize them. And I always have the option to come in here and change the look of this or add more links by just going to customize here and it'll take me to the widget that I made. Now, if you wanna build the widget that I have, on their website, if you scroll down towards the bottom, there's this option here that says button. If you select that, you're gonna first name your widget. So the first link I want to make is for my YouTube page. So I'm gonna type that here and then choose the icon so I can change it to YouTube. The next I'm gonna go down here to URL and type it in. Now, when I click on this, it's gonna take me to that website. Then the next thing we can change is the color. And then the other things you can change about this would be the font as well as the size of it, how round you want the corners, and then the layout and the alignment when you have more than one button. But this lets me quickly access my YouTube page it's my Instagram page. I also have quick links to my analytics. And then beneath that, I have my link to my music, which is Epidemic. I use them for all of the music that you hear in my videos. Now jumping into my YouTube page. Here is basically where I record all of the videos that I'm gonna be releasing on the channel. I found that I really like two different views. The list view allows me to get like a really quick overview of all the different details of a video. Whereas my calendar view here lets me get a nice, overall look of what's ahead. So with my list view here, I have a couple of sections and again, just the core details of what I need. Now I do have some other categories as well that I have since hidden because I found that I don't really use them. But the things that I found that I needed to know consistently, of course, is gonna be the name of it the status of it, if it's more in the to-do area of being like an idea or if it's something that's coming up next that I wanna prioritize or if it's actually in motion or if it's more in the completion phase and ready to go live or it's archived, like it's an idea that I had that I'm not ready to like fully extinguish and can always restore it, is then archived. Then moving on next to the status section, we have the live date. So when I place a date in here for a video to go live, it then will also represent that down here in the calendar view. So I love that it instantly is reflected there. So I'm gonna just clear that out. And then I have the platform here. So I have YouTube, Shorts, 
Instagram, TikTok, or other. Now I have it set so that if I add Instagram to this, when I go look at my short form view, I will then see that video in there as well. And I like that because it allows me to use the same page of information for both formats of the video. And then next to that, I have the sponsor section. So what I'll do is when I have a sponsor, I'll make a page for them. And in that page, I'll put all the different things for that campaign, from to-do list of items that need to be completed, to deadlines, to creative briefs that I get, just information in general. Now, another thing that I've done in here in my list view is added a filter. So if an item is marked as live or archived, it will not be seen here. The only way I'll be able to see it is if I go to my tab that says everything, which has literally all of my videos, short form and the long form, all here combined regardless of what status it's in. And I did that because I found that most of the time I just wanted to see what I was actively working on. And when I was seeing everything, it was giving me more information that I didn't need than the information that I did need. But beneath that, I have the divider to kind of separate the two different views and I just have three different views when it comes to my calendar. I'm able to see within here all of the live dates for my videos, regardless of the platform. And then I'm also able to see only my YouTube videos that are going live and my short form videos that are going live. And when it comes to seeing that information, I even made it so that I only saw specific details about it. So I don't need to see everything about it. I just need to see the platform and the date. But another thing that I've done to really help my workflow is create templates for different videos that I found that I was creating that had a similar style to the previous one. Let me explain. So like my iPhone tips and tricks videos, the format of it is very similar. So instead of recreating that page every single time, I have a template for it. When I have an idea, I'll come in here and jot it down. So I'm gonna write iPhone tips and tricks. And the status will automatically update to it being an idea. The next thing I'll do is come in here to the page for that video and I will choose one of the templates that I've made. Because you'll find that you'll have certain subjects within your video that you're gonna hit on. And I'm the type where I don't really write a script, but I write down keynotes, like things that I wanna make sure that I touch on in the video. So that's my YouTube video template. And then I also have one for my YouTube monthly favorites. If you're not familiar with that series, it should be. I'm gonna link it up here in one of these corners so that you can check it out and also down below. But those videos have a similar format. I have it here so that as I'm thinking of all the different items that I'm enjoying over the course of a month, I can quickly jot them down right here. I also tend to cover the same category of things from tech to non-tech items. And then beneath that, I have my shot list. So when it comes to filming, my workflow consists of me typically filming the video, edit the video, then write down any additional footage that I need, which is basically the B-roll, AKA my shot list. And then next to that, as I get different ideas for titles for the video, I wanted a section to kind of write them and just sort through which one spoke the most to me. And then I also have a section for my checklist of things that I want to make sure that I remember to do, things that I also want to make sure I put in my description box of the video, and any resources that I have for the video. Now, one thing I have consistently in my templates is a dump section, like right at the top, because when I have a thought, I want to be able to like quickly jot it down. And this has worked so well for me. And then it's like the cherry on the top is that I can then drag the thought that I had to the appropriate section in the template. So it's like a, a brain dump, brain cluster, I guess. Is that, am I using that term correctly? But you get what I mean. It's like a section for me to get all my thoughts out and then organize them later. I also have a template for my sponsor videos. There's certain things that are pretty consistent. You wanna make sure that there's transparency and people knowing it's a sponsored video. And then sometimes there's certain things that have to be approved or that you have to make sure you're aligned on with the brand, as well as any specific links that might have to be used for that campaign. Because the thing you'll notice with projects is that as you're working with them over time, there's a lot of information shared. And that information is lost in a bunch of different places. But Notion allows me to put it here in one. So this keeps me together with creation of content. And the thing that I like is that as I'm continuing to use these templates, I can refine these templates. So all I have to do is come in here, hit this down arrow, and then choose the three dots next to the template and select edit. And I can just update it as necessary. So one thing I'll do is use the same icon for all of my YouTube videos and the same icon for all of my short form videos. It just makes it easier to follow when I'm looking at things at a glance, especially in my list view, I can quickly and easily see which is which. Notion's a lot, man. 
notion is a lot to digest. But taking it back to my HQ page, my shorts page is pretty much the same as the YouTube page just for short form content. Beneath my shorts page, I have my common links. It's the page where I pretty much dump any links that I find that I use frequently. And this is something on the newer end. So <laughs> I just have a few sections in here and I'm gonna fine tune it so that I'm able to find the links quickly. But right now this is what I have. And then taking it back to my HQ page, I then have a task page, which I don't use much, honestly. I probably should remove that. <laughs> and then I have an analytics page. So this page doesn't take me directly to my analytics on YouTube. This page instead is a record of all the analytics that I've recorded over time. I like having that because I'm really trying to grow things so that keeps me accountable. And then beneath that, this is where I have all of my sponsors information. So if I'm going to work with a brand, I place their name here. So I'm gonna just add like brand name. And you'll notice again, the same symbol each time. So that when I look, I automatically know this is something sponsor related. And then I've made a section here that has some information regarding the status of that sponsorship. If we're awaiting a contract, um, actually in progress should be right here probably, but <laughs> I have this organized so that it's gonna tell me where I am within the deal that's happening. And then I also have a section here that allows me to state what type of video it's gonna be, like if it's an integrated, dedicated, social, or if I'm a talent, meaning that I'm showing up on set somewhere and the content may not go live on my channel, but instead on their platform somewhere. And then I also have a category for any draft deadline, the date the video goes live, and a place to attach any creative briefs. And then if I go down a little more, I even have a section where I can link the video. So that makes it super easy if I need to retrieve anything about the video for the brand. And then I also have a page for my goals and plans for my business so that I can make sure, you know, we keep the blinders on that tunnel vision and we achieve what we set out to do. I also then have a page for any legal things for my business, any business related links, and also a section for different meeting notes that I've taken over time. So that is the HQ page. Oh my God, that feels like so much. But yeah, this is like my, I guess, project management data base. This is how I run my business. <laughs> So we already went over my Tech Me Out HQ, which is all of my business stuff. Then beneath that, I have a page for all of my tax information. I am still building out what I want that to look like. And then beneath that, I have a travel page. So as I'm looking for flights, I like to have some place to kind of dump things as I'm doing so. Another thing that I like to use it for is to record information about different hotels that I've been to, different airports, or just different things that I wanna make sure I remember when it came to traveling somewhere. Because I travel a lot and I found that in doing so, there's certain airports that I like to go to over another if there's a layover there. Then beneath that page, I have my home page. So this is where I put all the information regarding my home. Now this is something as well that I'm still building out, but ultimately I have like a page for all of my HOA stuff. I have a page for different measurements about my home. One is that I was constantly going back to my notes page, looking at information that I had wrote down, such as like my window size, the rug size for my foyer, like just that random stuff. <laughs> so I've placed all of that in home measurement. Then beneath that, I have my personal section. So similar to the Tech Me Out HQ, this is a dump zone for all of my more personal things, like my different personal goals that I have, different things that I need to do for my finances, different medical information. I also went to Punta Cana. I just realized this was in the wrong section. I don't think I had my travel page built at the time, but I went to Punta Cana with my fiance for my birthday. And this is kind of where we planned out certain things about the trip. And then there's also a wish list page. So different things that I want to buy. Now beneath my personal page, I have my orders page. This is where I've jotted down different things that I've purchased. So I like being able to record when items are on the way, the status of the order, if it's complete, canceled, archived, shipped, the cost of the item, the card that I used, the date that I ordered it, the date that it's supposed to come. And I also have a tag section so that, you know, when I want to look at the different items that I purchased from a specific place, I can do that. And again, you see, uniformed, we have the same symbol per item. And I was also very intentional about the icons that I use for the different tab views here as well. But I have a few different views here. I'm able to see the items that are on the way 
any items that need to be returned, items that have been returned, and items that have been refunded. And then when I wanna see everything, I can see everything. Now moving beneath my orders page, I have my medical page. This is something that I'm building out as well, but ultimately everything medical related is gonna be in here. Now this page here, my subscriptions page, the end goal is for me to get rid of some of these, but in the meantime, I like being able to see certain information about my subscriptions, such as the name, the price, the renewal date, if it's a monthly or an annual payment, and also if it's a business or a personal subscription. So I like being able to isolate those things so that if I wanna cut back on a specific category, I can do that. And then I also have the card that I used. And that's really it. Now I know there are apps out there that you can download and it'll you know, scan, I guess, either your account or card or whatever, and it'll let you know all of your subscriptions automatically. But it's that scanning and the access to that information that I wasn't really fond of. So I'm like, I'd rather manually enter all of that. So that's why I built this here. Okay, now something else that I do a lot of is create call outs. I create those to basically section off different things that I want to have on the same page, which is what I did in some of my templates like this one here. This is a call out box and I just changed the color of the font and then added an icon. And then moving beneath my subscriptions page, I also have a section here is dedicated to all the different things that my fiance and I have to do from trips to wedding planning, all of that is in there. And beneath that, I have a templates page. So what I found is that I would find different templates online, which I'm gonna link down for you below because these really help change the way that I use Notion. But I found that in finding these templates, I didn't always use them in that moment or I might have used them and changed the way that they looked, but always wanted access to the original. Anytime I download a template, I place it inside this page. And I just love having a dump zone for that because it makes it easier when I need to go back to one of them. The thing that I have here is my dump zone. This is where I'm supposed to put like random thoughts that I have, but honestly, I find that I just put those in my notes app and then I transfer them here. But then beneath that, I have an archived area. So similar to how I will archive certain YouTube videos, I will archive certain pages. Like I don't want to see them, but I still want access to them. So that's where they'll go. But yeah, that's Notion for me in a nutshell. I've really been enjoying it. I've tried different project management programs from ClickUp to Monday.com, all these different options. And each of them are good, don't get me wrong. But what I learned from each of them is what I needed in the next. And so far after landing on Notion, I haven't found myself needing something else. But until the next one, y'all, which is gonna be next Saturday, cause we are on those weekly uploads. But until then, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.